Hey guys, I'm Daniel Norton here in my home in New York, and today we're gonna to shoot some product photography. So, you know, while we might be limited on some of the things that we can do currently, you know, as far as with social distancing and certain businesses not being open, there's always a need for product photography, and with a simple setup, you can definitely do it no matter where you are. I'm doing it right here in my home. So, um, I had this uh, vintage uh, Zippo lighter, and I thought I would make this as an example to show you guys, partially because I kind of went over in the live stream not that long ago, uh, kind of I did a shot with a candle, uh, and people were asking questions in DM about, you know, specifically about exposure and such. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot the Zippo, and we're gonna create what I would call like an editorial shot. So whenever I'm using terms like that, what, what I mean is that there's kind of two, two ways to look at things. You've got your commercial, and then you've got your editorial. These things overlap drastically, so it's not like it's a fixed thing, but just think of it like this. Commercial stuff generally is about showing the product perfectly, uh, to show detail, to show all the information on it. So think of all the stuff like on white backgrounds or really crisp, clear shots of things. Whereas an editorial shot uh, oftentimes shows the feeling of things. Maybe the light's not as perfect. Maybe it's got a little bit of depth and interest beyond just showing the detail of it. I mean, you can still show the detail, and this is gonna be somewhere in the middle because this could be something that you might see in the catalog, right? I thought, well, this old Zippo that I've had forever um, has like a scrimshaw on it, which is like a, you know, like a carving. I don't think it's actually a scrimshaw, but it's like a scrimshaw. Um, you know, it's a, a sailing thing. I thought, well, what can I do with that? And what do I have around? Because I'm just working with what I have. And I had some extra cedar boards that I had used in my closet for a project a couple years ago. They were in my shed. So um, I pulled them out. You know, at first I thought of all different ways to do boards. You know, I looked around. I, the whitewash would also be really good, very New England, because this has a New England vibe to it. Um, but this is what I have, so um, I think it'll work really well. And um, what we're going to do is, instead of lighting this how it would normally light a product, uh, you know, the most basic product thing, which we've done before, which is kind of a big light source, like let's say this diffuser panel over here, um, we are going to use that, but I'm going to create a little depth and texture and kind of put this in an environment, if you will. So we'll go step by step. Um, I do have like a video light lighting me, so I may turn that off at some point because we're going to get the flame and we'll have to check the exposure. But um, basically, let me go over my setup here. I've got my Nikon uh, Z6 here on a tripod with my remote on top for Profoto. I am tethered into Capture One as always. I will say too, because I got some DMs about it last time, because you couldn't see it in the shot. So I put it right there. There is a fire extinguisher right there. If you are dealing with fire in a place that it could be dangerous, which I guess could be almost anywhere, make sure you have something, a bucket of water, fire extinguisher, something nearby, you know, just to make sure that you're not gonna light your house on fire, because I would feel very bad about that. Um, although this is very safe. I will say something about Zippos though, if you don't use a Zippo, is that make sure, that it's not like you wanna light this thing and you could leave it burning. Like it will burn until all the fuel's gone, but it will get very, very hot if you leave it on for a long time. So we're gonna get everything set the way we want it, then we're gonna light the lighter. So that's the last thing we're gonna do. And plus we'll take a kind of a shot of it without uh, the flame too, just to have that as a, as a shot. Now a couple things here. I'm gonna just use the live view uh, on my camera. It's the simplest way to do it. You can also um, do it in Capture One if you want to see it that way. I'll show you guys how to do that. So if I go over here um, you know, to my camera, I can actually pop this up um, and it will allow me to look through the, through the camera. It's a little bit, uh, with this camera it's not bad. On some cameras it's a little bit slow. Um, you know, so you gotta kinda like pause for a second. But you know, you wanna frame it up. I'm giving myself enough space above so that uh, I can uh, you know, compensate for the flame. You know, I don't wanna change my composition a bunch of times. So I'm gonna try to figure out where I'm at. When the, when the lighter's open, I'll probably put it at some kind of a little angle maybe, something like that, or maybe like this probably is more likely, um, like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think the flame should be caught there. Um, I am also at 70, so if I find the flame is too tall, I can always just rack back. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna have a relatively shallow depth field. You can actually see reflecting in the silver something that's a very important point when you're shooting this kind of stuff, which is that whatever you, uh, whatever the silver or reflective sus substance sees, that's what you're gonna see in the reflection, right? So because we're gonna shoot at such an exposure where none of the available light affects my shot, that's not gonna really be an issue. Um, but just keep that in mind if you're shooting, let's say with constant lights, you wanna really be looking at those reflections. Okay, so we'll just shoot a dead on shot just to start with. Um, and we'll, I'm gonna build these lights up one at a time. I am gonna use multiple lights here. So number one, I'm gonna kill this here. Uh, we'll do what we always do, right? Which is make sure our exposure is, is greater than the exposure in the room. I'm at F8 at 1, 125. I guess I'll go to 1, 160. Uh, ISO 100. I already took a shot uh, to test because, and what you'll see, I'll do it again for you guys. Uh, what we're going to find is that you can see here. 
you know, you're going to get that little bit of reflection because that's just basically, you know, it's reflecting the, the video light that you see behind me. Um, if I kill all the lights, then I get this, which of course then there's nothing there. And if we do what we normally do, which is grab over here um, and drag the exposure slider over, we don't start to see the Zippo until about two and a half stops in. So that's good for us. Uh, I may, because we're only getting that little bit, I may just leave that on, but let me just check my exposure here. We're gonna do all this once we get the flame, just because I need to. Uh, you know, we're still almost two and a half stops. So all it's really doing is reflecting off the silver, which is not really that big of a deal. So for me, I'm fine there. Okay, so we've got this set up. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna build it up one light at a time. Uh, I'm gonna start with this light over here. This one is in my C group. This is a Profoto A1. It has the, uh, the little ball on the, the front of it, the diffuser. It's gonna throw light everywhere. Now I'm angling it in such a way, here I'll turn on the modeling light, you probably see it. This is in my C group. I am going to turn the model in. So I'm angling in such a way that it's hitting the, the, the subject, but it's, it's also hitting a little bit in the background, right? It's kind of feathered away. You can obviously turn it, you know, however you want, depending on uh, what you got here. And I have a couple of clamps holding this up. I don't mind it's throwing a weird shadow. I kind of like that, it adds some depth to it. So it kind of depends on your style. Um, you can hold this up however you want. Uh, let's start there, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna turn off the other heads. This one is in C, as I said. I am using TTL, which of course um, is gonna give me, um, you know, the exposure that it thinks is correct. So we're gonna start there, and then once we get everything in, we will adjust more. So let's see, I'm going to that C group, and I am going to turn off the other two lights. Let's go to C. Okay, so we'll just take a shot and see what it does. Okay, so as noted, right, as we thought, this is gonna be a kind of a moody look. I mean, there's even enough light on the product and you could theoretically throw like a reflector up and shoot it like that. If you wanted something, you know, kind of end of the day light coming through the window, that has some mood in and of itself. That's actually not terrible. And what we could do, I have over here um, a warming gel. This is a straw gel. Uh, I could hold it in front and just see what that does. Remember, TTL will automatically compensate, right? So it'll make the exposure correct. Yeah, now we have this kind of end of the day light coming through the, the space. And that doesn't look terrible if you're just going for mood, but I kind of want something that's a little more uh, clean and perfect. Uh, like I said, we could add a reflector. Let me just do that. I wasn't planning on doing that, but <laughs> you never, never should not add a reflector, right? Okay, so we could do a reflector, you know, and there you go. One light, you can actually make this pretty nice um, in and of itself. And again, the, you don't have that perfectly lit rim around it, right? You've got some silver hot, some silver darker, and that's natural. That's how you're going to see the Zippo in life. And again, that's what makes this more of an editorial shot versus a commercial shot. But again, I'm not just going to use one light because I like to use more lights and it gives me more control. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to, instead of the reflector, I'm going to add a second light source, which is this over here. This is another Profoto A1. This one just has uh, nothing on it. It's a bare head, basically. Actually, I'll do them one at a time. So let me turn off C for a second. And this one is going to be there, right? Similar kind of thing, right? It doesn't kind of wrap around as much. It's a little bit more direct. Um, again, not, not bad by itself. Let's, let's do them together. And let's see what we're getting here. Now we get this like crossed light, right? Now, normally I would say, you know, hey, uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to cross your lights, like, let's say in a portrait, because you don't want weird overlapping shadows. But when you're creating something that's supposed to feel like it's in an environment, if you were in a bar or whatever, or there's windows around, you're going to get odd uh, shadows and stuff. So I'm kind of creating that. Now, one thing that I'm not loving, though, is that if we look at this, again, we got the sides are very heavy lit and the front is, is very dark. Um, we're gonna give the front something to see, right? And that's what this is. This reflector here is gonna be. But before I do that, let's use that gel on this light. I think I'm gonna, I definitely want one of the, the lights to feel warm. I might do both of them, but let's just see. I think one's good, right? That just adds a little, <laughs> and of course we're gonna adjust the exposure in a second. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's add in this again. This is just a, a, a disc reflector. This is the, the last light halo or a compact with diffusion on it. You could also use a softbox here. The thing is that you want to make sure that it is uh, large enough. You know, you want to make sure it's pretty big because, oh, oh <laughs> I ran out of light stands, so I'm using a chair. Uh, okay. 
This is in my A group. And let's turn that guy on. And again, I'm just in TTL right now. That's through the lens metering. I'm basically just letting the camera slash lights uh, choose my exposure, at least to start with. Then we're going to adjust after that. Okay, let's find, we're getting closer to the final shots. So let's find a good spot to focus on. Go here. There we go, right? We've got a little bit of this uh, dark, so it has some, some depth to it. We know it's silver. Um, we have some areas where it's really blown up. You can actually see uh, there's nice detail where, the, where it's got beat up and stuff. Um, and again, this is a, a, you know, a vintage piece, so you know, that's what it should look like. So that's pretty good. I think it's a little flat for me. Like if this was going in a catalog, that might be okay. Uh, but I think I'm going to make some adjustments. So remember the sea light is over here in the back. That's the one that's throwing kind of that big shadow that you see forward. I'm actually going to turn that one down. Let's say one stop. And again, this is to taste, right? And I'm going to, let's just see. Actually, I'm also going to change my composition slightly. Uh, I'm going to go over here so you guys can see through the camera. I think I'm going to turn the lighter because I know once it's open, Right, and that, what does that do also? You can immediately see that probably, right? Now we have more silver lighting it up. So let's just look at that for a second. So we turn the, light, the lighter slightly and we've turned down that backlight a smidge. Okay, we gotta turn to close this so you guys can see it. There we go, right? Turning that light down gives me, so I'm not so overexposed. Now turning the lighter towards the, uh, the reflector gives that nice, uh, that nice kind of uh, silver front, but we still see some black areas. You don't want it to just look white, right? We want it to have some black and some uh, kind of exposed highlight. Um, I'm going to also turn down my B light, I think. Actually, hmm. You know, actually, I'm going to turn off this front light just for a second. When you're doing this, you want to kind of go back and forth and, and see what's doing what. Uh, every time you change something, you know, you got to kind of factor in. Oh, interesting. So even just with the, the bit of a bump, it's a... Uh, it's actually filling in decently in the front, which means that I like that, right? I, I can see the difference here, right? It's actually, it's like a little warmer, right? It's got a little feel. I mean, all the lights change, obviously, when you go into TTL. Um, hmm. Okay, so I want the A light on, but I just don't want it to be as powerful. So I'm going to turn it down by one stop. Let's try that. There we go. Now we have the clean, you know, it doesn't look yellow. It looks silver, right? And we have that vibe that we like. Uh, the background looks good to me, I think. Let's do a shot with, again, I'm at 1160. Uh, I'm going to switch, just so you guys can see. Normally, I would just use the live view on the camera, but I figure this way you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's turn it slightly this way. Cool. That should be enough space for the flame, I hope. We're going to find out in a second, I guess. So let's close that. There we go, right? That looks pretty nice. Now, this is where you could get a little picky, right? I think, yeah, because remember, there's only one spot that's absolutely in focus. So we might want to do any number of things to get the entire thing in focus. But I feel like because this is editorial and it's like 99% in focus, I'm not going to mess with it too much. Um, probably what you could do is close down the lens, but I don't think I want to do that because I kind of like the depth of field, um, you know, if you really wanted that. But I, I'm happy with it the way it is. Let's do this though. That looks good. Now I'm going to light the lighter. So I have a feeling that we're going to want to turn off the light in the space, but um, let's just take a shot first and see. Cool. Okay, I can actually see the flame is kind of close to the top. Oh, actually that's pretty good. So we don't really have to, right? Because that look, that works pretty nice for me. Um, if I gave myself, in fact, if I gave myself more exposure, um, let's say I went to 1125. You know, the flame would get a tiny bit brighter, and I think we're still okay. You know, I don't think we're getting much of the room in, even at that exposure. So that is pretty good. You can do any number of things now, of course. Again, you don't want to leave this going too long. Because, see, if you turn it flat like that, you see how the front of it gets a bit dark? I'm not sure I really like that. So that has to do with the angle. So we definitely like this better. Here we go. That looks pretty darn good. Let me turn this off. And let's take a quick peek. Okay, so here we see, right? 
around, again, the, the light is gonna see what it sees. Since the room is dark, it's just basically getting a reflection of, you know, just light source in here. So we're not seeing anything specific. This looks sharp. You know, it falls off uh, to out of focus area there. That really depends on where you focus. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty darn good. And again, you could do this any number of ways. The top of the flame is a little cut off, so um, maybe I will just drag, go back a smidge. Actually, I'm gonna move the, okay, let's do this. I'm gonna go, I wanna get that flame in there. Now, of course, right, you could always shoot the flame separately in Photoshop, and I know somebody's gonna say that in the comments, but if you can nail this thing in camera, that just makes your life so much easier. In fact, I looked online to see like what people do with these and I swear everybody's using the same generic fake flame and it just kills me because it's not hard to get, you know, the flame captured properly. It just, it's just not. So, um, yeah, so there we are um, with a little more space above. I just zoomed the lens back a bit and let's try it again. The other thing here too, guys, which is a little Zippo, if you guys are into Zippos, you'll know this. Um, I have the flame more or less in the center, which is actually making it a bit taller. Um, if you put the, the wick closer to the igniter, uh, the flame actually gets a little shorter, but then it won't be kind of centered. This is more or less centered, um, and that's kind of how I want it. So that's one reason why. Actually, that's how I can always tell that flames are fake in Zippos. Um, there we go. All right. Zippo lighter, right? Kind of editorial shot. Looks pretty neat. Let me close this down. We didn't need a fire extinguisher, thankfully. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, guys, whatever you're doing, any kind of product photography, you don't need a lot of space. I'm literally doing this on my dining room table in a small space. I'm using a chair for one of my light stands. I'm using small flashes. So don't let the fact that you don't necessarily have a lot of gear with you uh, stop you from doing projects and making you know excellent photos. You just have to think about it and do something that works with the product you're doing. And, you know, put it in an environment. Find little things around. Put things near it. There's lots of ways I could have done this with props and stuff. And you could even do it outside. I like uh, to have some control. So uh, I did it here. Maybe we'll do the next product outside somewhere. In any case, guys, just make sure you subscribe to Adorama TV and ring the bell so you get all notifications. Be sure to follow me, Daniel Norton, photographer. And I'll see you next time on set.